Hey, remember when we used to cover Winnebago's? Guess what? They're back, baby! And I am glad. I'm, I, I feel like we got the band back together. I always really had a, a, a healthy appreciation for these. And since the last time you saw them, they have made some serious improvements. So if the last time you heard of or saw a Winnebago trailer was from one of my videos, forget it. Start over. Let's start everything new because this is cool. So this is uh, their uh, rear kitchen model or sometimes called rear galley if you want to talk in like marine terms. What this thing is here, um, it is a ideal fit for most half tons or some bigger tow package SUVs would tote this around just fine. But they've done some really cool creative things here. They made the ceiling taller inside without making the RV's total exterior height taller. So uh, let your mind marinate on that one real quick. They've also bulked up the holding tank capacities and the axles from the last time I saw them. Uh, they're using uh, you know, the Asdell sidewalls and the cabinetry, the improvements, the fit and finish, the look of this thing. Oh, it, <laughs> man, this is not your father's Winnebago right here. This is something special. I like what they're doing. They've also really bulked up a couple things like the underbelly is enclosed and heated. That uh, I remember from years ago, but they've also, uh, you've, you've got a radiant barrier layer going around this thing, and you now have 12 volt uh, tank heaters going on this thing to help give you that better extended season capability. But there's all those little things like you can put bigger propane tanks on this. Instead of the 20s like a lot of lightweights use, you can put bigger 30s so you can have more time between uh, stops and refills, you know. There's, there's a lot that I like about this. I, frankly, other than the fact that the kitchen counter space is a little bit limited, I don't have a lot of criticisms on this. There was one other thing. Oh, it's a camp queen bed. I know, that ain't everyone's cup of tea. There's room in there for a true queen. I would kind of like them to just do a true queen. Chances are you'd like them to just do a true queen, but they don't. Um, and giving you that kind of fair information, telling you the good with the bad with everything in between is what we do. So if you appreciate that, make sure you like our video and hit subscribe. And let me know what you think of the new generation of Winnebago here at Bish's RV. And I need to ask a quick favor of you, just a little bit of patience and understanding. Um, as we go through this, like the floor is kind of dirty. We are in a live display. I didn't realize when I was coming out here, this was dirt floor display. Um, I wore my comfortable walking shoes. They used to be white. Now they're not. <laughs> what I'm getting at, it'll be a little cleaner when you take yours home. If you can look past that, we got a lot of good stuff for you today. And it's been a couple years since I had my hands on this model's predecessor. Folks, there have been some serious improvements. This is, this is so much better than it used to be. From the, literally the top down, better than it used to be. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on. Notice how we have a, a ventless flooring system right there, which is kind of nice. Also, they've uh, adapted to a, a, a dream dinette system right there. So you don't have that uh, big pedestal leg that, you know, a guy like me is always bashing his knees on. Now, uh, admittedly, if you're sitting all the way against the wall, you still kind of have the bar in front of you. So keep that in mind. It's, it's more accessible than it used to be, though. Doors on the end of the dinettes making for some easy access. We'll get all that kind of stuff open in a little bit. But check this out. So I'm sitting in the theater seat. This is your point of view. Awesome door side window coverage. And did you notice how the entry door not only has a window, but also has the privacy shade that I constantly whine about? Good job. Good job, guys. Up top here, good size TV straight across from the entertainment. That is what I call boardwalk and park place camping. Now, I said that this thing is different from the top down. And I, I meant that literally. They made this RV taller inside by a couple inches without making it a taller overall height by going with a taller ceiling and a low profile air conditioner. It's very interesting. I think it's like a six, eight interior or something like that, but it's, it really opens it up. Plus the light colors are nice. Um, over here in the kitchen, normally the default is a 12 volt compressor fridge. Um, thankfully these already come with a 190 watt uh, roof solar package, which should be enough to generally offset that. Obviously, usage and weather depending. That is kind of an open-ended statement. What we're looking at here today is the Swaptional <laughs> 8 cubic foot gas electric two-way fridge. Um, preferred by a lot of people for boondocking because on propane, it has such low electricity power consumption. Now, this might be polarizing to some people, but this Midwestern boy 
is all about it. This doesn't have a gas oven. Instead, it just, <laughs> it's, it's got a lot of storage back here. They've really done a lot of storage. So around the corner, under the fridge, doesn't matter which fridge you get, because they occupy the same space, just a big old drawer down there. And then where the oven would have been, where this RV often lacks storage space, a big old drawer there. So what's below it? Converter box and fuse panel. But isn't it nice how it's all, when the doors are all closed, it's all kind of tucked away. It just looks a lot cleaner in there. Uh, sealed edge thermal foil counters, and that is a, uh, a big stainless farm sink. And this is definitely a model where that countertop extension is really, really needed. Frankly, though, I, I don't know if I like it more for the kitchen or if I was sitting over here in the theater seat and wanted a place to sit down and drink. I think that is pretty awesome. Now, you've got the, uh, uh, you know, pretty good-sized cabinetry because the ceiling's taller than it used to be. You have more cabinet. Oh, I like how they segmented that. It gives you, uh, you know, you know, boxes, like shelf space for mac and cheese. Then you got room for big pictures for sweet tea or something like that. And someone's going to say, what, what do you know, Yankee boy, about sweet tea? I didn't always just live in Michigan. I know what sweet tea. You basically chew it. It's delicious. <laughs> now, I mentioned this doesn't have an oven. It also does not have an option for an oven. Instead, they basically just rely on a standard convection microwave, which, again, you have to have part power to run it, but it's enough. You can make your cookies and biscuits. So continuing around from the kitchen, getting our way over here to the uh, theater seating, one of the cool things about this, well, it's either a theater seat or a love seat because you have that fold-down armrest in the middle. Now, what's also cool about this is it has its own little power sources right there. Nice little place to charge a phone. Notice too, you got a nice little place to store your phone, that little armrest pocket, perfect place for some TV remotes. Now, um, notice here how they have included that huge chunk of extra storage in the slide. But look at this, you have a monster chunk of storage there and over here. Uh, double up, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm gonna get that open in a second. But remember when I said, good spot to charge your phone? Well, one of the cool things, these also have a handy dandy little wireless charge pad right there. <laughs> and more household and USB outlets. Oh my Lord, guys. I, I never thought I would say maybe you have too, too many plugs, like, wow. What an awesome problem to have. If we're asking ourselves, are there too many plugs? Uh, I think they won. Um, minor critique, minor criticism. I love this big storage, but it's blank. Um, I would really like a hanging rod up there or some shelving or something like that instead of making it a DIY project. And that kind of surprises me because they've nailed everything else. One of the other things I liked is when they first came out with this interior look, they had totally square handles. I, I, I seriously about ripped my calf open on one. I had like a six inch gash in my leg. These nice rounded edges, I don't have that problem. So I'm pretty happy about that. Now you haven't really seen pantry space, but look at this across from the bathroom. This could be pantry. This could be linens. I, I mean, this, that's a big chunk of storage. But once again, when you close all that down, this RV just has such a clean look. Now, I said that could be a pantry, and it could be, but I don't know that it necessarily needs to be because over here, what looks like just a couple doors on the wall, like you're looking at that like, well, how much storage could that actually be? Uh, the short answer is a lot more than I expected, but I figured I'd make sure you got to see every little nook and cranny, but this is what I was talking about over here. From the ceiling to the floor, man. Look at this. That's that's some serious mac and cheese space right there. Not too shabby, actually. Moving over onto the bathroom space. Um, I found it personally very fluffy friendly. It was uh, comfortable and fitting of a gentleman of my stature. Um, I wouldn't say standing because I was sitting. <laughs> Big rectangular shower um, as opposed to the uh, a, a lot of radius showers. The skylight is a smaller square style, but you know what? It's in the right spot. They understood the assignment. They got the job done. I, I think they got the job done uh, pretty well. Now, you might have noticed it's just a mirror mirror on the wall. Um, 
I'm doing my best to pretend I'm a vampire. You get a little look at my uh, pants in my left hand there. Ooh, GFI protected outlet in a great spot there. But kind of like in the rest of the RV, there's a little more storage here than meets the eye. This ain't bad. You can load up on a heck of a lot of Lipitor right there. So I like that you have a mirror and a medicine cabinet, but by just putting the mirror on the wall, maybe it's a little plain, but at the same time, it also, um, it, it makes the whole room look and feel bigger. Now, <laughs> you're probably not going to want to be sitting on the toilet when you open that drawer, but there's some good space in here. There's some really good space in this place. Past the bathroom, head into the bedroom. Once again, this is one of those very few things I just sort of went, huh. Really? They nailed so much else. There's a ton of room in here. This RV is most definitely sized for a true queen. But it's only a camp queen. It just, I don't know, kind of surprised me a little bit. Maybe some people who are a little more gravity friendly uh, don't care. Uh, the, the bedroom, though, as a whole. Let me, let me get off of that horse. Let me just look at this. The bedroom as a whole, oh my gosh. So much improved from when the last time I saw these. So like, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out where to begin. Let's start over here. Um, if you're like claustrophobic or something like that, <clears throat> you know, the uh, the stands or the uh, the hanging wardrobe closets don't go all the way down to the stands. You see there's household and USB outlets on both sides. Very CPAP friendly. And behind the closet, I am so happy. More and more and more manufacturers are doing this. Just those like headboard pockets. Bullets doing a good job of that. Like several brands, East to West does a good job of that. Uh, individual dresser drawers on both sides of the bed are excellent. And look at this, uh, again, very inspired, I think, by Winnebago's motorized division. The hardware that's uh, keeping those overhead cabinets open, that is awesome. By the way, up here, this is a powered vent fan. Uh, I believe that's factory standard now. I want to double check that. And it's a small fan. In the bathroom, it's what I call the four-inch fart fan, the three Fs. But um, it's easy to upgrade to a bigger fan. You might have noticed how both sides of the bedroom have some pretty good uh, cross breeze window coverage as well. I'm happy. I am. I'm very actually impressed with what I'm seeing. There's some very good detail work here, and storage below the bed. The only little funky thing here is there is a heat vent there. And when I looked at that, I went, "Oh man, please don't let me see one of those silver flex hoses where my cargo is gonna tear it and break it." What do you think? What's the over under? The answer is no. Nope. They got that all boxed in. That is like three eighths uh, OSB right there. Uh, you're gonna have to hit that with a claw hammer to, to smash it. Shifting cargo ain't gonna break it. Now there's one thing I couldn't quite remember on this one. What does the travel and access look like? So I closed it up. Well, I am closing it up. And if you're a skinny mini, <laughs> we're in a mini. I didn't do that on purpose. Anyway, you might be able to squeeze through there. But from the main door, most of us that are American size, like yours truly, we can get in here to get back to the kitchen. But the kitchen's like fully accessible. So, you know, whether it's, you know, stovetop, sink, refrigerator, this is pretty good here. You're going to need that second door to get up front, though. Can we get to the bathroom, I wonder? Let's find out. Okay, we're going to come up here. We're going to take a left turn, by the way. If you're motion sensitive, maybe close your eyes a little bit. Mmm, this is going to be close. I think. <gasps> okay, good, good, good. <gasps> yes! Yes! Okay, so back door is snacktastic. Front door gives us nap and crap accessibility. That, by the way, is a technical term. And you know, as I look at this thing here, I'm kind of reminded... Uh, back when I was first introduced to Winnebago's travel trailers, remember when they used to have those crazy, like, red, green, blue, yellow, uh, orange! They had a pumpkin spice mini! <laughs> those crazy color palettes, you know? Uh, <laughs> they were very popular with the people who wore the boots with the fur. <laughs> anyway, um, power tongue jack up front doing the lift and force, and again, the uh, ability to have the larger 30-pound propane tanks. Uh, you know, gives you more time between refills, but... What I, sorry, I saw something shiny. Back to the colors here. I think this is the best looking mini that they've had. It's clean. It's sharp. It's very linear. It looks like it's moving fast when it's sitting still. This looks awesome. This looks so much better than what I remember. It looks terrific. So um, down here, 
let me get uh, show you a couple things because first of all, you see that little home plate shaped sticker right there? Well, this rides on a little bit different chassis. It's not a traditional I-beam. It's actually a Z frame, but it's made with HSLA steel. Kind of like an aircraft chassis. In English, lighter but stronger. Now down here, the underbelly, enclosed, forced air heated, radiant barrier, and now 12 volt tank heaters. This has a pretty darn aggressive weather package. And I am glad we jumped down here to take a look at this because as you can see, that has nerdism number 37, the propane cooker hooker, yes sir. Now, back to the weather package. Can I tell you this is four seasons? No, first of all, I, I, I despise that phrasing. I really don't like that, that nomenclature because I think it presents false expectations. I talked to some people earlier today. I, I was told this was all weather. No, no RV is all weather. There's some nasty super sub-zero temps that no RV is made to handle. But massively extended season, short of just insane Arctic uh, permafrost, this thing's probably going to be fine. And speaking of extended, look at that awning it's huge it's it's absolutely huge and by the way those lights up there it's not uh an, a blue exterior light it's they're white led elements it's just kind of getting washed out because there's like this this <laughs> just ugly yellow backdrop back here and it's on both sides and basically the light is like it causes everything to have like a tinge to it in here even though we're indoors it's annoying um, I'm not in love. Like, I've been super like, wow, look at this. I'm not in love with where the outside speakers are. That's one of my things. I don't like high outside speakers. I prefer them being down here where you can actually hear them. Wait a minute. Whoa, I just tuned into the fact. Okay, so we have a full viewing window in the entry door in the uh, living room, but not the bedroom. And I don't know that I've ever said this, but I'm okay with that. And hear me out. In the living room? Yeah, I kind of want to be able to see what's going on. Makes sense. I don't know that I want people peeking in my bedroom. And if I want to look outside, there's a window right there for security. This might be one of the only times that I think that was actually the right decision. There's a lot of thought applied to that. Good job, boys. Girls, hot pockets, whatever. Okay, so a couple things here. Stable steps are super, super common. Like this one has those anti-slip aluminum plank steps. They're great. They're not. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you would prefer those stable steps, that's an easy thing for us to apply. You just let our team know what you're looking for. We can get that done. Not a problem. Uh, working our way around the back here. On the, uh, on the rear, you see a full hot, cold outside utility shower. That's cool. Notice, too, very like Rockwood does this, which I love. They do and instead of or. And that doesn't surprise me for Winnebago. They're, they're such a, you know, they're an underrated premium brand. I don't think they get the credit they deserve. I really, I, I never have felt that they got the credit they deserved. That's why I'm so glad to get these back in front of people. But um, they do a rear bumper that's big enough for a sewer hose and a 300 pound accessory hitch. They're doing and instead of or, which I like. Uh, roof ladder, and you can see off the back that the stovetop does have a ventilating hood and all those windows open for airflow. Of course, we're backup camera ready. That's not uncommon. But did you notice on the tail lights? The little white colored center in that that's because these have reverse travel lighting so you shift into reverse that is going to ignite so that other people can see what's going on now we kind of peeked in the pass through oh i forgot about this awesome i forgot about this um they're power jacks on the front they're not a v that scissors together each jack has its own button i don't know why i just i don't know i like that i like feeling like i'm in a little bit of control here because most time i don't feel like i'm in control now we looked at the pass through a little bit. I don't know, maybe we did. I can't remember what all I've done. Well, let's take a look here. We've got our battery disconnect switch. Wouldn't be bad if it was up a little higher, but I don't know. It that doesn't look like it's gonna, it's not like one of them red key styles that's gonna get busted. And this is a heated pass through compartment. That is a floor vent, basically, uh, that is just pumping heat in here. And that's right below your bed. So if you are cold camping, it's gonna help keep you comfortable. Also, notice over here, we have that 30 amp go power charge controller. And admit, this is weird spot to me. Why is the portable solar prep plug in that compartment? Because then you have to leave the door open. It just sort of feels like maybe that plug should be out here. Am I wrong? I mean, it's not the end of the world, but am I wrong? Now, a couple key things on the roof. Like we see the 190 watt uh, go power solar panel here. But again, it's that little Winnebago attention to detail. It's a tiny thing, 
but they put that wind fairing under uh, in front of it. Um, and it makes you wonder when you see it, why doesn't everyone else? The reason this is here is even though these are short, um, like legs that lift this up right here, wind can get under that when you're going down the road. Now, I'm not saying wind's gonna gust and rip it off the roof, but over time it's going to stress and pull and pull and pull a little more. And it's going to kind of, you know, work the fasteners, work the seals a little bit harder. That silly little wind fairing, it could seriously be something that just prevents your RV from getting a leak down the line. It's just funny how the littlest things like that happen. Now again, I'm picky about this stuff and my opinion doesn't really seem to match a lot of manufacturers, but I prefer white AC shrouds like you see on those Cougars over there. The black AC shroud though, probably not going to be the thing that makes or breaks the difference between sweating to the oldies or you know having a good time. But again, notice how they're using a low profile air here. That is how they were able, compared to the history, like long years ago when we used to cover uh, Winnebago RVs on this channel, and gosh, again, I am so glad we're doing that again. But um, they, uh, these aren't taller than they used to be. The ceiling is taller inside, but they lowered the air conditioner so you're not gonna, you know, clip it on an overpass. Because if you're gonna talk camping, it ain't an RV, it's a Winnebago. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the guy from Christmas Vacation, he's like, that there is an RV. Real beaut, Clark. <laughs> Good old Randy Quaid. It's really, I feel, I feel bad that guy just kinda unfortunately sort of went off the deep end a little bit, but um, why am I talking about Randy Quaid? Okay, never mind. Squirrel. Let me know what you think about her. Subscribe. Catch the next one. We got more Winnebagos coming. I can't wait for you to see them. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And they're back, everyone.